What's up y'all, my name is Holt Ingles, owner of HI Productions, and today I'm gonna to show you why and how to use ND filters on your FPV drone. If you wanna have smooth motion blur and cinematic footage with your Hero 8 or whatever GoPro you have, or whatever camera you have, really, you need to have ND filters. How do you apply them? What ND filter should you get? It all depends, but I'll show you what I have. I got, you need to check out, if you haven't checked them out yet, you need to check out Brain 3D. They have all custom mounts for pretty much every single frame. Um, just go to Brain 3D. They're not sponsoring this video, but uh, I really like what they do. And this is one of their um, mounts they gave me. And it's compatible with these Black Sheep ND filters. And I got, you can go on there and order these too. I forgot how much they were. I'll link the price right over here to both of these things, these items. But I have ND2, ND8, in the 4, 16, and 32. So one of the appropriate times to use each ND filter. I'll start from the top. I don't really ever use the ND32 because it's just too dark. I haven't even unwrapped this and I haven't even used this one. I just, just in case to have, I need to have it. Um, that would probably be for like a very sunny day when I'm filming in the snow or something. I might use ND32. I use the ND16 a good amount when I'm shooting in the middle of the day when it's really sunny outside. And I, and I do that because it allows me to keep my shutter speed at 120 and my frames per second at 60. But if I didn't have the ND filter, I wouldn't be able to keep my shutter speed at 120. I would have to have do auto, auto shutter speed and I would crank that shutter speed up and I just wouldn't get that smooth motion blur that I normally would get um, with just a regular shutter speed at 120 following that 180 80 degree rule I talked about in a previous video but I use the ND16 a good amount. And that also allows me to keep my ISO at 100. I don't really change that very often, especially when I have an ND filter on, there's no need to. And then I use the ND8 when it's cloudy outside, kind of bright, um, not too bright. I use it a good amount. I use the ND4, same thing. It's, it's bright outside, kind of bright outside, not too bright. It might be like, early in the morning, late in the afternoon, but it's, the sun's still out, kind of like it is now. I'd probably use ND4 right now. Use the ND2 when your footage is just a little bit overexposed, just a little bit, um, and you want to have that smooth motion blur and you want to get your footage to the right exposure. It's a, I will say it's a pain in the ass to use any, these ND filters, but they're worth it. And if you really want to make take your footage to the next level, you need to get these ND filters. So what I do is with this, uh, Brain 3D mount, slide your GoPro in there. It's honestly kind of hard. They, did, they made these pretty tight, and especially if it's cold outside, it's almost nearly impossible to get your Hero 8 in there. But before I do that, I, I should have shown you on this. This is kind of how I test the exposure, because you can't, once you put it in there, there's a back, so you can't see what the GoPro is seeing. And that's the only thing about uh, ND filters as a pain in the ass. So in order to know what ND filter you need, you want to turn your GoPro on, look through the viewfinder, and see what's overexposed. So once you do that, you grab, once you get good, you'll kind of know what ND filter you want, but you don't want to guess. You want to make sure you're getting that, that clean footage. And the only way to get that good, crisp footage is to protune every single setting. Like you want to make sure that your settings are right on point. And with that comes a cost, it takes time. And sometimes you might miss a shot. I, th I think it's worth it. Some people might not. Um, but I'm very particular about my footage. So then you'll hold, say, I think I'm going to need ND filter uh, ND4 right now. And I'm right. And I hold it up there, and everything is exposed correctly. Now, this is what it looks without it. This is what it looks with it. Perfect. So I'll show you how to put that on. Slide this in there. Kind of takes a little minute to slide in there, but as you can see, just sliding it in there real quick. And there's a little slot right here to slide your ND filter in, which is clutch. The only issue with these ND filters is they're glass. So if you wreck, there's a potential they might break. I haven't done that yet. Like I stated in a previous video, you want to follow the 180 degree rule so you can get smooth motion blur, get that cinematic footage that you're looking for. If you don't know how to do that and you don't know what settings to use, I'll have a video linked somewhere over here. You click on that, 
you learn how to do that and you can come back to this video and learn how to use these ND filters. Once you learn how to use these ND filters, you slide these in, your footage should be ready to go and I'll show you some footage that I was able to get with these exact ND filters. I'm on my way. I'm on